All right, so you might recognize this truck. It's Tony's 68 Chevy pickup. We've done rush repair on it, electrical, and a bunch of other stuff. We're going to do a bunch more stuff on it, so you should go to the YouTube channel and subscribe so you can check out everything. Last time we did a video, it was on airbags, and when you do that, you're going to be able to uh, lower the truck, but it's going to bring your axle up, and what's going to happen is, is that it's going to bottom out on this rubber stop right at here when you're driving. Even if I was to take that out, it would hit the frame in this brace right here. How we're going to solve that problem is by installing a C-notch and giving that axle more travel room. So today I am going to show you how to install these guys. It's not too much trouble. They don't weld in. We're just going to drill some holes, cut out some stuff. You stay tuned and I will show you how. All right, so uh, we had airbags in there, and you should go check out that video. I'm pretty sure that we've got a video on how to take out springs, too. Now, it's nothing all, it's all that complicated. You got these brackets. One goes on the top, one goes on the bottom. You got a long bolt going from the bottom. You got one top going from the top. A lot of times, those are going to be rusted in there, and I'm uh, pretty sure I got a video on how to get those rusted things out of there, so go check that out. But uh, it's not that big of a deal. Bolt on the bottom, bolt on the top. Now, we're going to be taking this little bracket it off a easy way to do that is by using one of these guys right here this is a hammer uh, jackhammer kind of a thing and you've got a couple of different points on these that you can use now this one right here we're going to use and just shear off the head of the rivet and we'll be doing that by uh, attacking it from different sides and working it until it just pops on off after it pops on off I can just use this here and the rivet right on the through. These aren't too expensive, 20, 30, 40 bucks, depending on where you get them, not a big deal. You don't have that, you don't wanna get it, no big deal. You just get yourself a die grinder. It takes a little bit more time though because you can't just get in here to all of them. You can grind down the head of this first one, but you can't get to the two in the bottom. So you actually have to cut this off all the way around so you just have the flat plate then you can grind off the rivets and punch them through so it takes a little bit longer that way but if you got this and don't have that you don't have a choice uh, a couple other things you're going to want to do at the same time is make sure that your glass is protected. You might be thinking to yourself, well, I'm not going to uh, get any sparks on there or anything like that, but you'd be wrong. And when the sparks hit glass, they burn right in. They'll burn into your paint too. If I wasn't going to be painting this, I'd make sure that this was covered too. But I don't have to worry about it. I might reuse that glass though or find somebody else that might be able to. So I got all this here going. I'm going to get this bracket off the rest of the way and I'm going to do a trim on this. Let me show you that in just a bit here. I'm going to get this off. Okay, now this bracket right here is going to fit up flush with the frame. If this is sticking out, that's not going to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this off. When I'm trimming it off, I'm going to be doing a bit of an angle like this because I want to make sure that it is trimmed off and far enough in. You can't just go straight down like that. So when you cut out that section for the C-notch, it's going to make your frame weak and it's going to make this back end here want to sag down. We don't want that to happen because if it does, our bed won't be level. So what we're going to do to make sure that it stays in the same exact place is we're just going to get a support on the back here. It doesn't make any difference if it's a one by one or two by two, if it's metal, if it's wood, it doesn't make any difference. But you do have to make sure that the truck is nice and safe, the front tires are chucked up, that your um, jacks are under there and everything's good. And then you can go ahead and mark the hole, make sure that your support is nice and flat. Then I'll go ahead and bolt this up. Then when I cut that, I don't have to worry about this going anywhere. Only do one side at a time too, because if you cut both sides, then obviously it's going to make it more floppy. So one side, support, and you'll be good. Okay, so one of the things I like about this kit is that it's uh, pretty easy to line up. What's going to happen is this hole right here and this hole right here, there is a rivet down here and a rivet right here. And if I grind the tops of those, or bottoms I suppose, off and then punch those through, when I put this up, 
these two holes are going to be right where those rivets are and I'll put bolts in there and line it up. So that's nice. So I'm going to grind that off and then I'll show you what comes next. Alright, now sometimes rivets will just fall out and then other times you just got to beg them to come out. If you get one that's in there and it's really tough, what you want to do is drill a hole through the center of it enough to where it weakens it and then it'll pop out, hopefully. All right, so you see this rivet right here? Um, when it was installed between this two plate right here, you see that little lip on there? So that lip actually happened in between these two plates, and this one rivet right here was really, really hard to get out. I'll bet you this little son of a bitch took me like 30 minutes alone. So you're gonna run into things like that. Just um, be prepared for it and accept it when it happens. Just roll with the punches and keep on going. I know when you're at home, you're thinking, well, damn, Dave, everything goes so easy for you and stuff. But behind the camera, we run into the same problems you do at home. I'm trying to give you as many helpful, handy hints when you run into those weird little things as possible so you can get your truck back on the road. Um, now, I'm just gonna put this up here and uh, kind of see where things are going and I'm going to mark my holes right here where I just took the rivets out and I'll mark them off to the side right here so that I can kind of use them as I'll do the same thing on this as I'll mark right here and here and then I'll be able to use that as a uh, this as a template if you will and then I'm going to go ahead and just mark out where I need to cut now when I'm going to cut this out I don't want a big giant hole I want to have it as specifically fitting on this as possible. So when I draw this out, I'm gonna cut it a little bit smaller than I need it, knowing I'm gonna have to enlarge it, but uh, I wanna enlarge it slowly so that I have it butted up right against this metal, if at all possible. That'll give me more strength. Now I can go ahead and cut this piece out when I do it. I'll generally cut the top piece right here, then I'll cut the side pieces. When I cut the side pieces, it'll kind of give me a mark down here where I can cut it to the back. Uh, again, make sure that the back is absolutely stationary and it's not going to move anywhere, and the same with the front. Now I should mention, before you start cutting into this too, you gotta watch out for your fuel lines, your brake lines, uh, electrical wires, and anything else that might be back here. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually get another piece of scrap metal and put it in between anything I have to worry about that I don't have to worry about it at all. Now when you're cutting this piece out of the bottom right here, and you've got your cutting wheel down there, um, if there is tension on this rear and it sags down, when you cut through this, it'll sag down the rest of the wheel, it'll catch your wheel, and it'll jerk it out of your hand and cause problems and blast into your eyes and stuff. So you gotta make sure you're wearing safety glasses, you gotta watch for that if it's gonna you know, catch and jerk on you, and if it does, it means you did not support your rear end properly. So if it starts doing that, stop, make sure that everything's secure, and then continue on. So I've got this piece cut off, and I know, again, that this is not gonna fit up in here just yet. It's getting close, um, but we're gonna have to trim it out just a little bit more, and we knew that. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'll see how my holes are lining out right here, and I will only enlarge this just to the point that is necessary to get a really nice fitment around this right here. So it is trial fit trim, trial fit trim, trial fit trim, trial fit trim. 
Uh, you might get impatient doing this and just cutting off a little piece and a little piece and a little piece and then decide all oh, the hell with it I'm just gonna cut a quarter inch off or something like that and then you're gonna have too big of a gap so take your time and, and uh, just cut off a bunch of little pieces if that's what you got to do because when you put this up here maybe you had it too far forward maybe you had it too far back maybe you don't have to adjust the front at all and everything's on the back so you just really have to uh, make sure that it is centered up in there properly so now I can feel that my bolt hole and my my uh, rivet hole line up right here. I know that everything's good. I can see on the back side that I'm uh, butted up against everything. I know that I'm all the way up too. You got to make sure that this is cut all the way up because if you don't, then when you're bolting all this up, it's going to jam into here and you're not going to get the uh, full effect. It might even bend your frame or something like that. So make sure that everything is absolutely proper. Now that we've got that set up, I can go ahead and put this in here. I can get the two Two bolts that start where the uh, rivets are and then I can go ahead and drill out all of the um, holes now when I do this generally what I do is I just get a brand new um, really high tensile bit just for this job because it'll burn it out by the time you do both sides Ah, I got all my holes drilled out now I can go ahead and start bolting everything up I do want to reiterate one more time though that you have to make sure that the C notch is absolutely in the right spot it's got to be all the way up against the frame sideways and all the way up on the bottom if you get the holes drilled off then when you start bolting and tightening things up it could take the frame and warp it up some so after I'm sure I have it in the right spot I'm using my C notch as the templates for my holes yeah, I can just simply um, just go right through the so I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this guy up and then I'll show you how to do the left side it is basically the same but there's just a slight difference that I'll show you here in just a second so now your left side is going to go basically just like your right side did I'm gonna trim off this piece that was down here so we can get clearance and this will bolt all the way up really the only difference on this side is these two holes right here this bracket right here it has the rivets in the back a little bit different and these two holes right here will line up with these two rivet holes right here in the frame so not only do I have to grind off these rivet heads here and pop them through I'll do the two in the back all also, that'll actually help this line up even better so I'm not gonna bore you with all the time that it takes you've already seen how it goes I'm just gonna take care of this when I come back though you should stay tuned because I'm gonna show you a couple of other little things you should do, consider doing at the same time so stay tuned you hear? Now I've got this all bolted in except for this bottom bolt down here and the reason it's not in is if I take this and I push it in you'll notice in the back here it's going to hit on this other nut. So what we're going to do is we're going to shorten this uh, bolt down. How we do that is we actually put the nut on it then when I cut this off I'll be turning it at the same time that'll give me a nice clean cut on the end of my bolt when I take my nut off it'll help clean up the threads and it'll be easier to install so let me get this all set up and I'll show you what comes next we're just about ready to go. The last thing I'm going to do is put in this little rubber stop. It's just going to go into a hole right in the middle of your C-notch right here. You've got some washers and a nylon lock nut. Again, make sure that you watch out for wires and things like that and keep them protected and such. I'm going to get this tightened up and then I'm going to jack the rear end all the way up so you can see how far up into the frame it'll go. And I'm going to give you a couple of helpful handy hints few recommendations on top of that too so watch out all right we're gonna be able to get our truck sitting really really low but when you get this far down into the weeds you got to do a couple of other things at the same time in order to make sure your ride is as nice as possible one of them is going to be your shock absorber if you use the original brackets that come on the top and the bottom what's going to happen when your shock when you lower it that far is it's going to take it and it's going to bring it down to an angle like this and then it's basically just not operating at all so what you want to do is get our shock relocator kit and it's going to bring it up to a more operable system here you can see that right here we've got the bracket on top and it moves it back and we've got a bracket on the bottom here that moves it just a little bit further forward you want to see a video on that that's okay I got one for you right here now another thing you got to do when you're doing a um, drop like this is your track bar what's that for let me show you something here you see this um, u-bolt right here 
Now if I put this up here, see where that's lining up? Now watch this. All right, you see how far this moved over? So what's happening with the track bar is it's going to be keeping your rear end in the center. Now, it was keeping it in the center with your original height. Now that it is dropped, you're going to need to narrow this track bar right here. I also have a video on that. It's right here. Now, I like these track bars the best. The reason being is it's adjustable on either side right here. So what happens is you can go ahead and bolt this in, then you can just grab the center bar and you can either dial it in or dial it out in order to expand or contract. The other ones I don't like because it doesn't have it adjustable at both ends. So you have to put it in, then you have to bolt it up, you got to lower to right height, you have to um, see where the measurements are. If it's wrong, you got to unbolt it, you got to screw the one end out, and then you got to do the whole thing over and over again. But with this, you just bolt it in once, you're able to dial it in and out, and you're done. So make sure that when you're getting something like this, you're getting all your peripherals at the same time. Shock relocator kit to make sure your shocks are operating properly. Your track bar to make sure that your rear end stays in the center where it's supposed to be. My name is David Welch. I'm at Brothers Tech Center every single week, making sure that your truck gets back on the road and looks good at the same time. You make sure you check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to the YouTube channel because they tell me if I get one more, I'm going to get like a wings or something.